Meat is the most nutrient-dense, perfect food for humans. It just is. Hi, folks. Dr. Bob McCauley. Joe Rogan has a registered dietitian on who essentially is wrong about everything. And during the interview, he just absolutely trashes Bill Gates for looking so unhealthy. Check out all my books on audible.com. Meat is the most nutrient-dense, perfect food for humans. It just is. Well, that was Diana Rogers, and uh, she's a registered dietitian, and um, and so she says that uh, meat is the most perfect food in the world. Then I guess it's just the most perfect food in the world. She doesn't show any evidence for it. This is what you get from the medical world, the medical establishment, and registered dietitians are in their only little fiefdom within the the medical establishment, and uh, they're going to tell you what's healthy. And if you don't think so, then just shut up because they know better than you do. So you you know meat is a very inferior food. Now I'm just looking at the facts here. I don't care whether you eat meat or not. I don't care uh, if you like the taste of meat. You like big burgers. That's fine. That's not what we're talking about here. I just want to get at the facts, the actual facts. First, we'll start with the protein. Well, uh, meat is around 15 to 18 percent protein. Uh, you get up on the high side, some of your more lean cuts will be 20, 21 percent. Those are really, really expensive. So, you know, the, your average hamburger is about 18 percent protein. Spirulina and chlorella are 60 percent protein. Okay, and I'll also say, I mean, so that's obviously many times higher, four times higher than you're going to find in meat, fish, eggs, and dairy. And then you've got, what you've got in meat, fish, eggs, and dairy, and let's just talk about meat, because that's what she's talking about. You've got protein chains. So you have, your body has to take those protein chains, take them and break them down into amino acids, and then reform them into a human protein chains. It's not like you take an animal and you take protein and you just stick it into the human body and that starts working that way. What the, the human body does is it takes amino acids that are found in plant life in particular, um, and I'm saying spirulina and chlorella, it takes those and it takes these pre-digested amino acids and turns them into long complex protein chains in the human body. Whereas again, meat, you need to break them down and then reuse them. Well, this is, you know, a lot of work. And there's a big problem with cooked animal protein. I'll get into that. It's such an exhausting conversation when you say that to people, though. Like you said, I think, you know, you eating all that meat? Like, what about your cholesterol? What mm -hmm. about, you, you're going to have a heart attack? So here's Joe Rogan arguing against meat. Because what, what are you going to do? Going to have a heart attack? Yeah. I mean, this is what you get when you have meat. Um, you, you know, it's, it's high in cholesterol, it's very difficult to digest, but here she is telling us, a registered dietitian, Miss Rogers, she's going to tell us this is the perfect food on earth. Well, I'd like to know why it's the perf most perfect food on earth. Because spirulina and chlorella are the most perfect foods on earth. I don't see anything that even comes remotely close to spirulina and chlorella. I'd like to know if she even knows anything about spirulina and chlorella. I'd like to just ask her, do you know about spirulina and chlorella? Have you ever heard of that? And see what her response is. If she calls it pond scum, you know what she is. She's a nutritionist, a nutritional idiot. I have yet to see anybody in the tr nutritional world, in particular registered dietitians, n ever hear about spirulina and chlorella, and if they do, it's pond scum. This is the way they think, and to say something like meat is the most perfect food for human beings. Meat is the most nutrient-dense perfect food for humans. It just is. Why is that? You know what the problem with meat is? Let's get right to it. So um, all, the, all the animals that we eat are all vegetarians. Okay? Beef, it's grass, they're grass-fed beef, you know, or they're corn-fed or whatever they are. You've got chickens, you, even the fish that we eat, uh, you, you know, they're all, they are all uh, vegetarians. And so what, are there any nutrients in meat or fish or eggs or dairy or any of the, are there, are there any uh, nutrients in there that are not found in the plant world? No. All you, what they are is a middleman. You're eating the food that ate the plants, and it's a middleman. I mean, there's just nothing there. The problem, of course, as I've said before, you know, the cooking, the cooking of the animal protein, meat, fish, eggs, or dairy. Now, if you were going to eat this raw, you wouldn't have a problem. Um, but who eats raw meat, fish, eggs, or dairy? I mean, I've said this before so many times. Sushi, yeah, you know, I don't really trust the, you know, the kind of fish that we get these days. We can take that up some other time. But um, when you cook animal protein, which meat, fish, eggs, and dairy are all cooked, um, what happens is 
and let's see if the dietitian knows this. I doubt it. You, you've got these protein or these amin long protein chains, and the amino acids are held together with little peptide bonds. And then when you cook it, this becomes a big mush. And then you eat it, and you're trying to break this all apart, and it's not very efficient, and it actually causes a lot of disease. So I'm going to go ahead and say that meat is not the most perfect food in the world. It's the really one of the worst foods we can possibly consume, and it brings on more disease than anything else uh, other than dehydration. People don't drink enough water. Yeah, and it's working its way into policy, which is really disturbing to me yeah. like as a mother like new york city public schools vegan on fridays now in addition to meatless mondays so now you've got a school system where 70 percent of the kids are economically disadvantaged and might go home on the weekends like they need school lunch right and now you're ba you're you're flanking the weekends with nutrient poor both friday and monday and it's well, I've got an idea. Why don't we just give them that, these kids, um, on Meatless Monday and Vegan Friday or whatever they got, and let's just give them this, and then they'll have enough nutrition. Now, would they ever do anything like that in the public schools? No. Will someone like this, a registered dietitian, ever talk about spirulina or chlorella? Only referring to it as pond scum, that's what I'm going to tell you. You know, this is all I take with any meal. That's all you need to take. A small hand of algae. That'll give you all the protein. There's only about three grams there. So it's about two grams of protein in, the, in what I've got in my hand right there. And that's what I eat every single day. Any meal I take, I take about that, three, four grams of spirulina and chlorella. I don't count out the tablets or anything. This is food in tablet form. And um, it's not the best tasting thing, but are we talking about nutrients? Because she's talking about, you know, kids not getting uh, nutrients at all, and they're very low nutrition foods on, on, on Mondays and Fridays. Well, once again, um, what are we talking about? Nutrition? Are we talking about meat? Because meat is not nutritional at all. There's really, there's very little nutrition in there. You've cooked so much of the, 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 the nutrients out of it with all the cooking and all the processing, especially in public schools. You know, would the public schools ever do anything like this? This is out of the question. So what are we talking about here? Nutrition or whether or not we should be eating meat? It's this ideologically driven thing that's based on this idea that if you eat less meat, it's better for the environment, like this thing that they say. And they also say for health purposes, like, right. oh, they'll, they'll, they'll cite the China study. Like, it's one fucking study, and, like, no matter how much you say, like, hey, you need to read the rebuttals of the China study yeah. because they're pretty brutal, and it's, it shows that it's a lot of biased evidence and that they really didn't do a good job of being objective about that. Uh, I'm going to stand up for the China study. This is the most comprehensive, uh, you know, dietary study in human history. Nothing's come close. Um, I think he's heard about the China study. I don't think he has, Joe has read the China study. Um, because if you do this, it'll tell you in there what they did with this. They took basically, uh, you know, 34 years of data and were able to shrink it down into 17 years. So we didn't have to wait forever to get this data, you know. And who, who went up against this? Well, there was, you know, all the meat eaters everybody went after the China study because and they were they were all meat eaters they just don't want you to understand that you got to eat protein uh, you, you, know, you got to eat meat to get your protein you got to eat meat if you want to be healthy this goes back to what the health and this is the best thing ever because the guys from what the health came in and said you know what if you stop eating you know animal protein meat fish eggs and dairy um, your diabetes is going to go away and on the on the uh, show the doctors and I'll show you a couple of clips here I mean they just went berserk this is the most unscientific discussion I've ever had in my life well, why don't we get, I mean this is we get some am I on the doctors or am I on some kind of show you seriously our producer for one second that is not science that's a lie Travis all the doctors were meat eaters so what do you think you're gonna get I mean they, they said you, you just you got to have meat and they're shaking their heads opinion but the opinions we put here are unanimous after reviewing 800 studies we tell you to only eat two-thirds of a, of a serving of meat a week in Okinawa they have 80% of their calories from carbohydrates 80% this is so unhealthy here are the most nutritionally dense foods in the world, spirulina and chlorella. Hey, let's ignore them forever. Let's ignore these and never 
ever think about spirulina and chlorella as being any kind of a nutrient source or anything like that. No, that's just p pond scum. And let's go to meat. So when you put a somebody who doesn't promote meat up against meat eaters in the medical world, all you get is accusation. of fat. You can't make those statements and I, then expect I make those scientists those statements because to agree I've got with you. Tons you can't. of science. <laughs> arguments. We did 1,600 calories. We did not. We did not. We have the this data. This is absolutely You academic. don't have the data. We have the data. I've got and the data. I thought, you know, because these studies, we're going to get in, he starts saying, where's the science? Where, uh, the sci Let me tell you something. Science solves everything. It tells us everything. What, what do you need God for when you just have the science? It, you know, if you don't have a study. Davis, you, we all know as physicians <laughs> that there are so many studies out there and everyone can cherry pick. Well, what good is it? You know, live by the study, die by the study, like I always say. Well, these, you know, if you want to keep looking at those kinds of, you know, studies f to, you know, find out what the truth is. And that's real science. Walt Willett, who's the chair of the Department of Nutrition at Harvard okay. School of Public Health, where I did my public health Dr. degree, Willett. basically has done a study that shows that people who consume eggs don't have a higher risk of mortality. Another study just came out with 44,000 people okay. that showed all cause mortality was less in people who and consumed who one egg per study? day. But who that wasn't in Iran. It wasn't that funded by industry. That wasn't Good luck. They're all paid for by the meat industry. They're paid by for the dairy industry. They're paid for by the egg industry. And on and on. It's not a huge risk. And I think when you take these numbers out of context and you cherry pick the studies, it can be very scary to people. And it's a very confusing landscape. It should be scary. They want you to say what they want to hear. And there's plenty of people out there that are going to do that for you. If they're not showing you evidence, any evidence, they're mm -hmm. not, not showing any papers. Mm -hmm. how, is this, how is this science? I think we've seen a loosening of standards. Oh, yeah. Here's the difference between 2017 and 2019. So you can see the top part is what we're doing in excess. And you can see that diets high in red meat used to be a very small percentage of like the cause of death globally, mm -hmm. which is even a silly thing. But it was it used to be sodium was much higher. And now meat has gone up. Do you see this? 36 times more likely to be the cause of death How is that? in two years. So this is the study. This mm -hmm. is and this analysis when when they're doing this, how are they coming to this conclusion? Right. Nobody knows. They Nobody just knows. tell you. They're, they're, they're just saying it. They're just saying it. So what is their motivation? We don't really know. Um. Well, I know they don't want you to eat meat anymore. Now, I'm not for that. I'm for choice. You want to get your meat and raise your meat and eat your meat and you want to get grass fed from the organic. Go ahead and do that. You want to shoot a, if you want the best meat, you go out and you shoot a deer and you eat the venison or whatever. That's wild meat. It hasn't been processed and all that kind of stuff. They're coming after you. They're coming after your meat. They don't like it anymore. Now, I'm not, I guess it again, I'm not for that. <laughs> okay. But that's what's going on here. You know, you've got big, you know, big money you know, in, involved here. When they decide that, you know, they don't want you to eat something anymore, you're going to understand you're not going to eat this anymore. We're going to trash it. We're going to tell you it's, it's unhealthy for you and we're going to take it off the market. Well, I'm going to trash it and tell you it's unhealthy for you and then you can make the decision. But these guys, and you know who they are, okay? Gates is one of them. They just want to make money in a different way and they're telling you because of the environment which meat is not very good for the environment sorry raising meat you know algae is puts uh, tons of oxygen into the atmosphere and absorbs all this you know carbon di carbon dioxide all this kind of stuff you want to believe in global warming and all that kind of stuff um, be my guess I don't think it makes much of a difference on the environment one way or another um, but the truth is whether you want to admit it or not uh, you know, meat is not nearly as environmentally friendly as algae for so many different reasons. I mean, you know, the amount of algae you can produce 1,500 times, times, not percent, times more protein per acre, spirulina and chlorella, than you can with animal protein. I, I think that there's a powerful desire to consolidate food production globally and this is an amazing way to do it. He hit the nail right on the head. Before you could eat a certain amount of meat with these, you know, in the, in the, they all published in The Lancet, 
because that's gospel. You see, you got to study, you publish it in Lancet, and then that's it. Just shut up. There's no more to be said about it. You were so off on the science, in my humble opinion, because you say you say sugar doesn't cause diabetes and that carbohydrates don't cause people to be fat, and then you use science and you said that 80% of Okinawans eat rice as their primary no, carbohydrate. No. That's just not true. It's science. Isn't this science? Science tells us everything. So this guy, he just hit it right in the head. They just want to control you. They just want you to stop eating meat. It's global warming. It's this, it's that, or whatever. They're trying to make money off of this Impossible Burger or all this phony meat they're trying to make and everything. That's what this is about. There's a powerful desire to consolidate food production globally, and this is an amazing way to do it. The guy's 100% right. The Gates, yeah. Gates Foundation is one of the major sponsors of this study that okay. I was just talking so about. So it's fuckery. So, and, but the thing is, like, he keeps saying that we've got to eat less meat and you know, we've got to cut our consumption of meat out to be healthy and that we're going to get used to these meat alternatives. When a guy like that says that, I'm like, are you making money because of this? Like, why are you saying that? And by the way, you look like shit and you're giving out public health advice. You're, you're giving out health advice and you're sick. Well, welcome to my industry, Joe, uh, the health industry. <laughs> All these sick people run around telling you how to live and they look like crap. And I'll say something else about meat eating, you know, and meat eaters. You know, people who eat a lot of meat, I can tell them in two seconds. I, 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 you know, especially people that really are into meat and they have a lot of them, especially as they get older. I mean, I could just look at their faces. Faces, it, it, They age in a certain way. And, you know, I mean, I'm not trying to insult anybody, but it's usually not a pretty sight. Meat eating is just not a healthy thing. I mean, we all wish we could have a nice big burger and it was nice and juicy and all that kind of stuff. I, that, you know, means so much. I, I like pizza. I wish I could have a, a nice big pizza every single night and that was the healthiest thing in the world. But it isn't. It's garbage. You know, anytime I ever eat anything that I shouldn't be eating, which I always eat raw fruits and vegetables, anytime I veer away from that and eat something, it doesn't go well. My body immediately says, what the hell is that? So you look at people in my industry, and there's so many of them, they just look like crap. And uh, they're giving out health advice. And I've noticed this from day one. You go to these expos, and you see the most unhealthy people, uh, you know, ob really, really obese guys telling you how to be healthy. Really? I mean, you know, what? I want to ask them, what are you doing exactly, and what's your diet like? Because I'm going to do the exact opposite of what you're doing, and then maybe I'll be healthy. Actually, that is how I got healthy. I'm not a doctor, but when you've got man boobs and a gut, and you're walking around, and you have these like toothpick arms. I'm like, hey, buddy, you're not healthy. I'm not a doctor either. I'm a naturopathic doctor, but I'm not a medical doctor, and ex that's exactly why I'm able to give you health advice. It's because. I'm not a medical doctor. You're still turning to the guys in the lab coats with the stethoscopes for health advice. I mean, doctors uh, have, you know, they're, 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 they die sooner than any other white collar professional. Accountants live longer. Lawyers live longer than doctors. Doctors average life, I don't know, is 58, something like that. 58 years old. I mean, don't listen to these people. You know, diet and exercise. What diet? What exercise? What are you talking about? Diet and exercise? How about a, a McDonald's diet? Is that healthy? They never say. You know why? Because they don't know. They have no clue. You may as well be listening to your plumber about health. This is a listen to a medical doctor about health. Just make it policy and indoctrinate these kids from kindergarten to age 12 with these messages. Like the Meatless Monday messages are all wrong. Like, they're what is all the wrong. Message? Uh, meat is bad for your health and the environment. Well, that's because it is unhealthy for you. Meat is very unhealthy, and it's not the greatest thing for the environment. That's kind of another totally different issue, but that's beside the point. As I said earlier, spirulina and chlorella are very good for the environment, if you're going to talk about the environment. Um, but you're just teaching propaganda, too, and your propaganda is that you need to eat meat. And you're very, you know, you're very worried about this. This is the propagandizing our kids. I mean, I don't want to see them told that uh, in the public schools that you need to be a vegan. Um, I think they should just be left out of the public schools. But so this is propaganda for uh, for our kids not to eat meat. And you're doing the same thing, just in a totally different way. You're taking science, and you're, you know propagandizing our children into believing that meat is healthy and that you have to have meat. Well, here I am to propagandize you to tell you that spirulina and chlorella, the two most powerful foods in the world, are vastly superior to any other food. You want to call, you want to call that propaganda? Fine. I call it education. 
meat is the most nutrient dense perfect food for humans it just is that's propaganda so that's the reason that's the main reason I made that video you know I, I'm sure that she's a very nice woman uh, and the other guy that's on here are nice people that's not what this is about I don't care if you eat meat I don't care I'm not worried about you destroying the planet or anything like that I'm a health professional and I talk about nutrition I'm a certified nutritional consultant, a master herbalist, and naturopathic doctor. And, you know, it's 64 going on 65. I'm still running a six-minute mile, and my blood work is perfect. And I haven't eaten meat in 40 years. Okay, 40 years. It was in India the last time I touched meat. That's why I made this video. She, that's propaganda, and it's even worse pro propaganda with all these other people are doing. I mean, the, you know, really, the science. The science tells us everything. The Lancet is not, you know, they're just publishing this science. Why are they doing this? We don't know. It's propaganda. They don't want you eating meat anymore. There's some people that want to make a lot of money off of this fake meat stuff, and they're out for you. That's what's going on. Anyway, what's the healthiest food in the world? You know what it is. Say it with me. Spirulina and chlorella. Two types of algae, the most nutritional dense foods in the world, the broadest array of nutrients, and they just kick the butt out of meat, fish, eggs, and dairy every single time. Again, I'll say it one more time. They're just middlemen. They're just middlemen. You like the taste of them, so you get used to it and you eat it. Dr. Bob, I'll see you next time. Meat is the most nutrient dense, perfect food for humans. It just is. It just is. Hey, folks, check out all my books on Amazon.com. Uh, I've written seven books now, uh, but this one's on Audible Silver, the Miracle Mineral, End of Infectious Disease, uh, The Cure in the Mirror, Nature's Protocol for Surviving Cancer. That's on Audible. And then my most popular book, I have sold tens of thousands of these books through the years, never promoted it, never marketed it. It is the Miraculous Properties of Ionized Water, the definitive guide to the world's healthiest substance. Third edition, I revamped the whole thing. It's on Audible, too. So those are all read by the author's voice, my voice, and I hope you like them.